In this video, we're going to look at how to add your custom fields into columns inside your post listing. So here we have a directory, and in that directory, we have a field called city, contact number. So in the previous videos, we looked at adding the featured image, and now we'll have a look at adding the custom field. So perhaps the easiest way to do that is to add a new custom field to the column listing here. So what I'm going to do is head over to the field group for that particular post type. We're going to add a field, and I'm just going to call it the custom field so that we can identify it. So there we have a standard text field as our custom field, and I'm going to save the changes. So now when I head over to the directory, and I'll edit the your new company, and you'll see now that we have the custom field, and I'm just going to add custom text so we've just added some custom text into that custom field going to hit on the update head back to the um the listing and right now what we're going to do is add that column so to add a custom column the first thing that we need to do is add that column to the um, columns that already exist and then the second thing we need to do is identify what content should go into that column so if we have a look here at our code snippets, you'll see that we have the manage post columns, which does what it says, manages the post columns. And then we'll see how we have this manage underscore post or manage underscore directory and then underscore post underscore custom underscore column. So basically what this does here is it says manage the content that are in the post type post and that matches then back up to the column. And here we're looking at manage the content in the custom post type directory and that will then link back to the column so to show you how that works if we look at the manage the post columns you'll see that we have one setup here that identifies the post type post and a second one that identifies the post type directory and basically what we're doing here is we're telling wordpress what columns we want in the post post type and then in the directory post type. So in the post, the standard post post type, we just added a featured image. And now you'll see that if we have a look at the second entry here for the custom post type directory, we've added in the city and we've also added in the contact number. So if we have a look here, you'll see we have the city and we have the contact number. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the next element and the next element we're going to add is going to be this contact custom field so i'm just going to copy that so we've copied that to the clipboard and now what i'm going to do is add a new element to this array now what we're doing in this filter here is we're bringing in the post columns we're then changing those post columns and then we returning the post columns value so basically we're just filtering out the information that exists and we're adding in new columns so what i'm going to do now is just show you how we can add th that custom field and what i'll do is i'll add it after the contact number so you'll see here that we have this format for adding a new column and what i'm going to do then is add a new column and i'm going to say array and then i'm going to give it a a column name and in this case i can just call it i'm just going to call it custom field because that's what we called it so we're going to add the array custom field um, and we need to give it a name that doesn't have any spaces so i'll just call that uh, contact custom that just follows with contact city con number and then we've got con custom and that value will be equal to, and we'll just put your custom uh, custom value. So, right, that's going to then output the array, and that array then will be the custom value. So, array, and let's just make sure we've got single invert commas correct. So, it'll be array. That array will have this title in the column listing. So I'm going to save those changes. And now when I head over to the layout here, you'll see that we have custom value. 
now what we need to do is assign a value to that column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and you'll see here that we have references now that match up back to the cont city. So there you see cont city and then we have cont number which is cont number and now we're going to look at the cont custom. So to do that I'm going to copy, enter and I'm just going to copy that cont custom and we'll replace that here. And now you'll see that we use the standard get field um, uh, function from advanced custom field. So I'm going to go back to my group, my field group, and there is the contact underscore custom underscore field. So I've just copied that. I'm going to head back to my snippet and insert that. And then I can save the changes. And now what's going to happen is when we go back to the layout here, you're going to see Oops, not there. This one over here, you'll see now that a value will be inserted um, there. So we have the add custom field. So we added the custom text. And if I went to the next one and I added some text here, let's say this is new text and we update that. Then when I go and have a look at all directories now, you'll see that the value has been inserted. If I wanted to move these elements around, so at the moment we have the featured image, the title, and then we have city, contact number, custom value. Let's say I wanted the custom value at the beginning, then I'd head into my snippet. And what I can do now is move this array with the custom value that I just created. So move that code and I can just insert that now before the city reference. So paste that in and now when I save and I go back to the listing you'll see now that the custom value appears before city so that's how we can arrange those custom values and the reason why we can ar arrange them is because these particular entries that we've created these custom entries don't exist within the original post columns listing. So what we need to do then in the filter is in order to get those columns in the right place here, we have the title, we have this tick box, and we have the date. And those are standard fields that are pulled in via this post columns variable. They exist within this array of column names. Now what we want to do is combine those post column um, elements with our custom elements and that's why we use this array slice function from PHP so if we go along here and we have a look at the um, PHP array slice then this gives you a pretty good idea of what we're doing and if you have a look at the various options available to you you can see that you can target elements specifically and there are a couple of ways of doing that so for example you can target the uh, second element or from the second element. So that would return C, D, and E. So that's element number zero, element number one, element number two. So everything here from element number two will be output. If you want to isolate, say, the first couple of elements, then what we've done here is we've said output an array slice, and you'll see here that we have two elements. And what we're saying is, output everything from the element zero to and we want three elements after element zero so here we're saying start at zero and output three elements so it outputs a b c and with this input with minus two and one it basically goes minus one minus two and the very first element is the d so if we have a look at what we're doing on our side is we're kind of using the zero or two numbers and a true statement. So here we've said output element zero and output element one. And that basically includes the tick box and the title. So if I go and have a look at the listing, we have the tick box and the title. And what I've done is I've actually inserted that feature image between those two. So if we have a look and see how that was done, and we look at the array, you'll see here that we have, um, here we have the 
um, insert those elements and then we've used the array slice and then we've said post column um, so here we've said go to element zero and add one element which was the tick box here we've said then we've said add in the featured image so we added in the feature image and then we've said okay head over to that post columns array and then go to element number one which would be the post title and include the first element and that would be the post title and that's how we ha we have then the post title then we bring in the three custom fields and then we target the date field right at the end so if we go and have a look at that very last element you'll see how that now we targeting element number two in post columns which is actually the third element and the first element there is the date so if i wanted to include the date if i wanted to include the date here oft if i wanted to move the date from there to after um, uh, after the title i could do that simply by heading over here to that array slice and then instead of saying just include one element i'll say include the next two elements and if we save that and head over i'm going to just close that and we head over here you'll see now that we have the the featured image the title and then the date and then we have the custom fields and you'll see that you can't list the same element twice once that element is listed it cannot be listed a second time so and that's why you'll see here that we haven't um that this element hasn't listed itself again a second time because we still have the reference here to the date so i'm going to head over here back to the slice and i'm going to change that then to a one so we only list the one element save changes head back to my listing now and you'll see that the date moves back to the end so that's how we then combine the elements so what we've done is we've taken the post columns element we've then used the array slice to slice it up into individual columns and then we've inserted these elements in between those individual items and that's pretty much what happens here in this row so um, that's then done using the array slice um, and because the custom fields are not part of that post columns the original array what i'm able to do then is separate that original array, array into separate items and then i can simply move the elements the custom elements to wherever i want them and they will then appear in the listing so if i wanted to move this to after the date then i can simply copy it from where it is or cut it from where it is and then paste it in after the date element and we'll save those changes and now when we refresh you'll see now that the contact number appears after the date right so that's how you can then quite easily create the column layout that you want and insert the elements exactly where you want them so what i'm going to do now is just move that contact number and move that to before the date again and then we're going to save the changes head back to the listing and now you'll see that the contact number appears after city again so if you wanted to just as a quick summary then so when you see the array slice here's the array that's going to be sliced and then with the very first number here then indicates where to start if you if you have this layout of uh, two digits and then true what this is saying is then start at item zero start at item number one and the last one then is says start at number two the number that follows then indicates how many elements to include after that in each case here we've said just include one element if I went to the first element here and I said include three elements then it will include zero one two three so that would actually be four items which is pretty much all the elements that come through so when we refresh now you'll see that we have the company name and the date all at the front and then we have the featured image the custom field so these are elements that we've added on our own so by doing that I can move all the standard elements 
to the front of the column and then leave the rest to follow and of course now if I go in and just change that back to one it'll go back to the layout that I created and then you'll see now that we have the featured image the title and then the date at the end so um, so the best thing to do is to consult the PHP documentation here on the array slice and that'll give you a good idea of what you can and what you can't do you'll also see then in this function how we've adapted it then for our purposes and if you want to know more about the filters that we're using then consult the developer resources in WordPress so that's the one that we use to target a specific post type content and you'll see they have two examples here of post page and if it was a custom post type post or page here would be replaced with your custom post type name and then we've also got the manage post columns which then allows you to insert um, or set the columns that you want to use in the output in your listing so it's basically then broken up into two pieces the columns that are going to be used which are then listed across the top and then the content that's going to be included in each of those columns well i hope you found that useful and you're able to create your own custom layout views then in the wordpress post listings thank you for watching